Welcome to episode 30 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Myland Butterworth, and today we learn how a ferryman toys and insults Thor in the Lay of Harvard. A rock of mountains stood behind Thor. Some were like upturned ships, some like unfinished pyramids, and monstrous cones with their tops sawn off, and none of them were smiling. Thor strode west over the tundra, and the sun kept pace with him. Then late in the morning he left the wilderness behind and hurried across scrub and undulating land. So he came to a sound, a swift, deep channel. The air was utterly still there. The sun placed a dazzling hand on the water, and the water seemed barely to move as it moved. On the far bank, a figure sprawled in the midday sun, and his flat-bottomed boat lounged beside him. Hey, called Thor, and the water quivered. You over there, are you the ferryman? The figure stirred and stood up. He cupped his hands. Who is that oaf yelling over the water? Ferry me across, called Thor. I'll pay you well with this pannier. And Thor eased his thumbs across the shoulder straps. It's packed out with fine fare, and I've eaten as much as I can already. I have a glut of herrings and a pool of porridge before I set out. The ferryman slowly got to his feet and pulled his hat well down over his head. You're pleased with yourself, aren't you? <laughs> I only knew you what lies in store for you when you near home. You'll hear nothing but moans. Your mother is dead. My mother dead? cried Thor. He screwed up his eyes. He screwed up his whole face. What grief could be greater? Having alarmed and upset the credulous Thor, the ferryman began to insult him. Barefoot, he called scathingly. Beggar's clothes. Not even breeches, I doubt, if you even have a place you can call your own. Bring over your boat, rode Thor. No need to be afraid. I'll guide you in anywhere whose ferry is that. Now, the ferryman took his time. He turned his back on Thor to taunt him and smiled grimly. Whose ferry is that? repeated Thor. Hildorfer, the slaughtering wolf, entrusts it to me. He's a wise man. He lives on Rothsey, the Isle of Council, and he has given me my orders. No pilferers, no horse thieves, only worthy men and well-known faces. So, said the ferryman, if you want to cross here, tell me your name. I'll tell you, shouted Thor. Though I stand alone, I am Odin's son. I am Meili's brother, and Mogni's father, strongest of the gods. You, ferryman, you're talking to Thor. The gods' words made waves on the sound. They ran straight across the channel and broke at the ferryman's feet. And who are you, I'd like to know? shouted Thor. Tell me your name, ferryman. <laughs> My name is Harbord. I seldom hide it. Why should you hide it? Or am I talking to an outlaw caught up in some feud? What if you are, retorted the fireman. Unless I am fated, I can look up after myself against the likes of you. Thor clenched his right fist, rubbed it against his beard, and stared at the cold water. You're not worth the trouble of wading across this channel and getting soaked up to the waist, but I'll repay you, you knock-kneed ferryman, when I get across this sound. Harbert put his hands on his hips. Here I am, and here I'll wait. You're not my equal since you fought Ragnir. You want to talk about Ragnir, do you? That lolloping giant, do you know his head was made of stone? And yet I killed him. I laid him out lifeless. And you, Harbord, what were you doing meanwhile? <laughs> I spent five winters with Fulvar on the island of Algron. There was plenty to do. There we fought. We sank our shafts into heroes and virgins. 
Thor rubbed his beard again. How did you win them, your women? They welcomed us with good grace. Yes, with high spirits. And they were well advised to do so, for they could no more than have escaped us than make ropes of sand or dig the bottoms out of the valleys. Harbert opened his arms. I was the one they turned to first. I slept with seven sisters, and each one gave me ecstasy. And you, Thor, what were you doing meanwhile? I killed the fierce giant, Theol Z, and hurled the eyes of Alvandi's son into scolding heaven. They bear witness to my feats. Everyone can see them. And you, Harbert, what were you doing meanwhile? I enticed night riders from their husbands. I wrought lovecraft with those witches, and the giant Hilhibird, he was not made of straw, he gave me a magic branch, and I whipped his wits off him. Hmm. So, called Thor, that's how you repay a generous gift? The gray-bearded fairyman shrugged. The oak he shouted across the shining water, grows strong on shavings from all sides, each man for himself. And you, Thor, what were you doing meanwhile? I journeyed east to Jotaheim. I slaughtered slovenly giant women as they shambled over the fells. If they were still alive, there would be a terrible throng of giants and no man in Midgard. And you, Harbert? What were you doing meanwhile? I was the cause of war in Valand, the land of slaughter. I set princes at each other's throats. I thwarted peace. Thor looked at the fair man. He listened. His brow was creased in thought. After they fallen in the fight, shouted Harbert, the nobly born journey to Odin, but Thor... He caters for a great gang of thralls. I see how even-handed you'd be when your gifts of mins to the gods, retorted Thor. Not that you've any say in the matter. Your limbs are strong, but your heart is faint, jeered the fairyman. Such was your fear. You were glad enough once to crawl into a glove, and there you forgot your name, Thunderer. You were so scared, Fialair might hear you that you didn't even dare fart or sneeze. You, womanish ferryman, I'd swipe you straight down to hell if I could reach over this sound. <laughs> Why bother, said Harbert, with a voice like oil. We have no quarrel. And you, Thor, what did you do next? Away in the east. I patrolled the bank of the Iving. Servong's sons tried their luck there. Thor suddenly stopped, and in one movement picked up a block of stone and hurled it over the sound. It whirred as it flew. Harbert stepped hurriedly out of the way, and the boulder buried itself in the bank beside him. Like that, yelled Thor. They threw boulders, much good it did them. Then they begged for a truce. And you, Harbert, what were you doing meanwhile? I was in the East, too, and came to a certain understanding. I turned the head of a linen white maid, and we met in secret. I aroused that lady wearing gold ornaments, and then I enjoyed her. Hmm. A woman well found, said Thor. I could have done with your help, called Harbert, to hold that lily maid down. I wish I'd been with you, shouted Thor eagerly. I've uh, been only too ready. And I've had trusted you, said Harbert evenly, if even you were not known for breaking promises. No, called Thor. That's not true. I'm no heel biter like an old leather shoe in spring. And you, Thor, what were you doing meanwhile? I was on Holosea, the island of the sea god. I slew the brides of the berserks. They were depraved serpents. Thor, you brought shame on your head, said.
said Harbert scathingly. You lady killer. They were more like wolves than women, protested Thor. They attacked my well-trimmed ship and threatened us with iron clubs. Theophy ran away, and you, Harbert, what were you doing meanwhile? I was one of the hosts that came to Asgard's frontiers to raise our banners and redden our spears. Are you telling me that you meant to fight the gods? <laughs> I'll give you a little finger ring and then you won't fret, said the ferryman mockingly. It will be a peacemaker between us. Thor was enraged. He kicked at the bank, and a hailstorm of grit and pebbles rippled across the silken water. He gripped Mjolnir in his huge fist. Where did you dredge up such filthy abuse? I've never heard so foul an insult. I learned it from men, age-old men who live in the hills of home. Thor shook his head in anger and envy. That's a fine name for Barrows, Hills of Home. That's what I call them. And your sharp tongue will be the end of you if I choose to wade across this river, shouted Thor. You'll howl more loudly than a wolf if I hit you with this hammer. Harbert replied all the more swiftly. <laughs> your wife, Sif? She's doing some entertaining. She has a lover. Keep your strength for him. That would be more of the point. You witless fool, roared Thor. Shut your mouth and keep your stabbing tongue inside your liar. The ferryman paused and with his one eye peered into the shining water that stops for no man. No, he called. I'm telling the truth. Anyhow, how long you're taking to get home, you'll be well on your way by now if you crossed in this boat. You womanish ferryman, you kept me waiting for much too long. Thor paced up and down the bank of the sound, now swinging round and changing direction, now glaring across the water like a caged animal. The ferryman watched him. I never thought a mere ferryman could detain Asathor. Thor's eyes were blazing. He gave a great bellow that rang round the sky. Here's some advice. Row your boat straight over here. Keep your mouth shut and set Dan Magni's father on the far bank. Go away, retorted Harbert. I'm not rowing you across. Thor bent over the swift cold water. He saw himself in it and saw, too, how the ferryman had toyed with him and how, for once, his strength was no use to him. He lifted his head and thrust out his red beard. If you won't ferry me over, he called, at least tell me the way around. Few words, but many miles, replied Harbert. Over stock and over stone, take the track on your left until you come to Midgard, and there you'll find your mother, Fjordkin. She'll show you the way to the trampling rainbow that brings men to Asgard. Can I get home today? asked Thor. Walk fast, don't rest, and you might be back before sunrise. We've talked long enough, said Thor angrily. You do nothing but mock me. He turned and then looked back over his shoulder. If we ever meet, I'll pay you in full for refusing me this ride. Thor strode away furious and scorn, and as he went, the jeering laugh of the ferryman followed him, and then Harbert's words, <laughs> Get lost! Let every evil being have you! The god quickened in the vast gray wasteland. There was a sandstorm in the wilderness, and the wind unwound it, a long scarf leading into the lee of the Indigo Mountains. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.